What's that? Oh, this. This is a picture of Fiji. Fiji? But that doesn't look like Fiji. Well, that was a long time ago. When my tata was about your age, that's what Fiji used to look like. Then what happened? Hmm? So what happened to Fiji for it to be like this now? It's a long story. It happened a long time ago. Please tell me, Tata. But we need to go. It's, it's gonna get too cold. Please, Tata. I really want to know. Where do we start? Do you know about the ozone layer? I remember reading about it in those books we found. Okay, let's see. Computer, tell us about ozone layer. The ozone layer acts as a natural filter for the sun's ultraviolet radiation. It surrounds our planet Earth at an altitude of about 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles and is made up of what is known as ozone molecules. So it's like a shield to block out the sun? Not block out the sun, but reduce the amount of harmful sun rays that come in. Okay, but how does that affect us here in Fiji? Well, the harmful rays from the sun can hurt us in a lot of ways. Computer, please list UV effects on environment and humans. Exposure to high levels of UV rays can lead to high risk of skin cancer, sunburns, and even premature aging. UV radiation can also damage parts of the eye, leading to cataracts and even blindness. The same effects can be expected of animal life. But what about all this? What happened to all the plants and animals? Phytoplankton, the tiny free-floating plants, which serve as the lower part of the marine food chain, are particularly vulnerable to UV rays. With reduction of plankton, soon the marine food chain was imbalanced, which led to a lot of the fish which were the staple of Pacific diets becoming scarce. So when the fish had no food to eat, they started to die. Then we had no food to eat? Sadly, that's right. So there's nothing out there for us to eat? Oh, there's something out there, but not much for us to eat. The delicate balance of nature dictates a lot of the environment. Extreme lack of biodiversity results in all matter of marine life dying out. Soon the oceans became a cold, dark abyss, void of life, a memorial to all at once nourished. And the trees? Where did they go? Computer, please explain extreme effects of UV rays to the environment, specific to plant life. In severe extremes of UV exposure, the life cycles of plants will change dramatically. High UV exposure resulted in reduced plant growth, photosynthesis and flowering. Saplings in particular are easily damaged due to high UV radiation. Change in plant life factors into many instances, including bird and insect migration. In time, the rich green hills of Earth were left barren. No blade of grass. But if the ozone layer was there to protect us, what happened? One day we found that there was a hole in the ozone layer. So what did that mean? It meant that the ozone layer was slowly going away. Was it dying? Well, I guess you can say that. But how? Well, a long time ago, mankind started producing what became known as ozone-depleting substances. Computer, explain ODS. 
ODS, or ozone depleting substances, are manufactured chemicals which contain chlorine and bromine. In the lower atmosphere, these substances cause little to no threat to the environment, which is what propel their usage. But when released as gases into the higher atmosphere, they began to eat away at the ozone molecules. But if we knew that the gases were bad for the ozone layer, why did we use it? Well, we didn't know. Not at first. CFCs, the most commonly used ODS, was introduced as an effective coolant for refrigerators, freezers and air conditioners. What's an air conditioner? It was something people used to keep themselves cool before. But it's already cold. Fiji wasn't always this cold. It used to be very hot. Why didn't people just go outside or open a window? Because people just got too comfortable with technology. But air conditioners weren't just the only ones releasing CFCs. Some industrial solvents and chemicals also used CFCs as a main component. Why couldn't we find something else to use? When the negative effects of CFCs came to light, research started on alternatives. Hydrofluorocarbons, or HCFCs, was introduced as a viable substitute as the effect it had on ozone depletion was minimal compared to CFCs. But this research did not take into account the rise in usage of HCFC products. But if people knew what HCFCs were doing, why do they use them more? People knew, but they didn't seem to care. Didn't anyone care? Well, there were some people who tried to fight against this ozone depletion. Many meetings and workshops were arranged to address the issue of ozone depletion. On September 16, 1987, the Montreal Protocol was signed by 24 different countries, agreeing to phase out ODSs by the year 2050. By 2013, 197 countries had taken it upon themselves to contribute to this phase out. Awareness campaigns reached out to many cities and communities. People did take notice. Eventually, breakthroughs in research resulted in effectively decreasing the use of most ODSs. However, the lifespan of ODSs in the Earth's atmosphere is tremendous, with some gases lasting years after emission, resulting in climbing temperatures, rising seas, and extreme weather conditions. So even though they stop, the gases are still in the air? Yes, and they continue to have an outcome on the environment. Developed countries were better able to cope with the changes these gases brought about, but the Pacific was not as lucky. Aid from developed countries was given to the Pacific Islands to ease their foreshadowed demise. Like vigils with money instead of candles. All the people could do was sing songs of a dying earth hope for the best. But then why didn't the Pacific Islands speak out? Didn't their voice count? It did, but I guess most of us islanders back then didn't worry too much about things like ozone depletion or climate change. So the voices that spoke out just weren't heard. So that's how Fiji ended? With a whisper? I wish we tried harder, Tata, when we had the chance. I know. I wish the same thing. We still have time to help prevent against the rise of ozone depleting substances. We still have time to help save the ozone layer and the earth it protects. Take the time to learn more and find out what you can do. Please, don't let this be my future. <laughs>